Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to be seated shortly, but I am seeing the number 34. There is a strong anointing coming on them. Those inside here, please bring them out, ushers. Right now I stretch my hands across the length and the breadth of this place, inside, outside the overflows. 34 of them. You are drinking of a strange grace. Bring them out. Take that grace now. Take that grace. Take that fire. Bring them out. Shele parutasia. Embrakato shelia. This is koinonia. Shila parus kebarutiasia. You are being shifted to dimensions in the spirit. Parus kelebrende ketalias keba. Everyone pray in the spirit. Shele barakatas keba. Rekete barutos kobadiata. Just bring only those in the main auditorium, those in the overflows. You can bring them to the front of your projector screen. I shift you by prophecy. New dimensions, levels in the spirit, dimensions in the spirit. Encounter grace, encounter grace. Up the balcony, encounter grace. In the name of Jesus. A man can receive nothing except it is given unto him from the Lord. Shalabakata branda gete posi. Shelebaratosia dagata. Shkebaredo dasia. The Spirit of the Lord is asking me to prophesy speed. For someone, the days of delay. Shakata. Ebrakatata. A grace is coming upon your destiny. Speed. 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 By the Spirit, help them please. By the Spirit of the Living God. Parus keba talis kamata. Please, whether you are an usher or not, help them. In the name of Jesus, the overflow, the basement, outside, I declare grace upon your destiny. Grace upon your destiny. Shetas kabaranto shortly but let me speak over a closed door over someone's life i'm doing this by the spirit tonight is not a miracle service but i stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and i decree and declare hear me in the name of jesus who is the christ of god that any door that has refused to open over your destiny i declare over it a father be open a father be open and Tata, be open, be open, be open. Doors of ministry, be open. Doors of power, be open. Teberas kubaniya shalata. Please open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit everywhere. Open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit. Inside, outside. Those following online. 
Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Shela paratos kedebada. Edify your spirit man. This is koinonia. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Building capacity in the spirit. Majesty. Shebeleke Paradox. Shebaratos Kebranda Baladam. Shalabarakatos Sabranaka Baladaba. Shalanda Salabaratos. Of your majesty, yeah. And forever changed by your love. In the presence of your majesty, majesty. in front here before you go back to your seats i decree and declare that everything that represents captivity in your life comes to end now and that this grace you have contacted will speak again and again in your life in the name of jesus please go back to your seat if you can god bless you there is a woman here this is one two three four five years You've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Where is she? You are wearing a dress and the hand is black. Is there someone like that? The hand of your dress. Who is that? <laughs> Madam, have I met? Do I know you anywhere? Where are you coming from? Look at me. How many years? Five years. Five years. Yes, Where sir. is your husband? He's not in the country. Sir. I need to pray for you because your season of laughter is about to begin. Listen. Listen. Look at me. Listen. Listen to me. My dear people, hear me. You see, when God does these things, it is not it is not a showmanship it's, it's not about the vessel focus on what jesus is doing more than what the vessel is doing madam what's your name Gloria. am i wasting your time tonight please just be patient see this is why god sent us to this city because Madam, who is Gloria here? Who is Gloria? What's your name? Gloria. Gloria. Yes, from sir. where? From Venice. I'm from Lupe, Airport Road. You came from Airport Road? Yes, sir. Who did you come with? My husband. Let the person come. Your life is about to change. <laughs> sir, please stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Listen. Please, let me say this. Hold on, please. You know, many times when you see 
unusual dimensions of the spirit like this most times bring her I command that spirit let her go now leave her it's over madam look at me two of you your life will so change in the name of Jesus Christ I release grace on you both by the power of the Holy Spirit. Sir, what do you do? Stand up. Things have been going down for you. Yes, sir. The, don't be embarrassed. This is the house of God. Yes, sir. Listen to me. This started from year before last. Yes, sir. Into last year. And if I don't pray for you right now, you are being constrained. Yes. But one, two, three, the month of May yes, is a strange month yes, of lifting sir. for you. My God Himself is lifting you into supernatural dimensions. Do you have children? How many years have you been married? Four years. Four years. <laughs> Sir, don't cry. Oh my God. In the name of Jesus, who is the Son of the Living God, I speak like Eli spoke to Hannah according to the time of life in the name of jesus christ return with your miracle children sir look at me there is the place of physical value where you offer products and services but there is a spiritual dimension you believe that yes sir. i want to pray for you lift your hands you i stretch my hands towards you grace comes on you and it will take you and your wife to new dimensions in the spirit dimensions of favor in the name of jesus madam please weep no more you see he said weep no more for the lion of the tribe of judah five years hold on please madam don't cry jesus is lord this is more than a man there is nothing a man can do for you i pray in the name of jesus and i stretch my hands towards you by the God of heaven, you will stand on this same altar or any altar that is available representing this ministry and you will testify to the good hand of God. I stretch my hands and I declare, barrenness, help her. Look what is happening to her. This is five years. No child. The Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy. This is not about explanation and discussion. This is kingdom come. A revelation of the reality of Jesus. I stretch my hands and I declare captivity comes to an end now. In the name of Jesus. I don't know why you are for the same reason. Where are you from? No, your state of origin. Oshun State. I want to pray for you. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. I decree and declare. Look what is happening to her. I curse that spirit right now. Did the Bible not say blotting out every handwriting? It says, and every ordinance that spoke against us, he nailed it, the Bible says, to his cross. I decree and declare, let it be over right now. My dear, this lady, what's your name? How long have you been married? Five years. No child. You believe in Jesus? I want to pray for you. Look at me. It is over now. I stretch my hands by the spirit of grace and I pray. I don't care what the medical report is. In the name that is above all names, according to the time of life, return with a child. And for all of you who are left in Jesus' name, I minister to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, and whatsoever name Adam called it, that was the name thereof. In the name of Jesus. This lady, where is she from? From Ondo State. Ondo State. Can I pray for you? Yes, sir. How long have you been married? Ten years. Ten years. No child. Yes, sir. Now, you may never know the need for a miracle until you are in that position. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me, my dear. I stand by the God of heaven and I declare to you that it's a new season. By the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Can you celebrate Jesus and be seated?
How many of you love Minister Freke? My goodness, my goodness. We honor you. We love you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Hallelujah. Please be seated. This is the house of God. This is Koinonia. Second Timothy chapter 3, please. We have to be very fast tonight. Second Timothy chapter 3. Let me start by sincerely appreciating everyone. Thank you for your love, your kindness. It's one thing to be called of God. It's one thing to be sent into a territory. But it's one thing to be believed, to be received. And we truly appreciate you for opening your hearts. And in the name of Jesus, God is already doing great things and he won't stop. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ. So let's go to the word, 2 Timothy, chapter 3, from verse 16. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 16. Help us please. Do we have that projected? 2 Timothy, chapter 3. The Bible says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Please, let's have our attention together now. The Bible says, and is profitable. He's talking about scripture now. That scripture is profitable for doctrine, number one. Number two, for reproof. Number three, for correction. Number four, for instruction in righteousness. Why? Verse 17. He says that the man of God, the man of God here does not mean a minister necessarily, even though contextually speaking Paul was writing this letter to his son in the gospel Timothy he was part of his apostolic ministry to strengthen Timothy who was in ministry actively and he was telling him that that the man of God please give it back to us that the man of God may be perfect the word perfect there means mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works so the Bible reveals to us that scripture is the basis for the maturing of the saints as powerful as miracles and signs and wonders are they do not sustain the ability to mature the saints the saints cannot be matured just by the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit the prophetic miracle signs and wonders these are consolations these are tokens of god's love representations of his power but in themselves, they do not sustain the ability to mature the saints. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible encourages believers to be grounded and established in the truth of God's word. And the strategy that was invented by the intelligence of God to help believers mature is called doctrine. Doctrine is God's way of helping believers to come into maturity doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina it means an accepted body of truth an accepted body of knowledge listen the truths that make for our excelling in the kingdom are finite there is an exact body of truth that we can lay hold of and then we will walk in experience in victory here on earth you know, the narrative that has been given in the body of Christ is that um, our pursuit for spiritual truth is infinite. It's not a very accurate theology. It is the knowledge of God pressing into the person of God that is infinite. We will continue to know him for eternity. But as far as our living on earth is concerned, our representing his purposes, the exact body of truth allocated can be known you can have that body of truth like a student who will go through a university system he can graduate he can exhaust the curriculum it does not mean he will stop learning learning continues but he can exhaust the body of truth allocated for that field of study are we together those are a set of beliefs that are accepted and are taught Sadly, the tragedy across Africa, especially, and even our nation, is that there is hardly a commendable level of spiritual maturity among believers. 
we see signs and wonders just like we witness by the grace of God and to the glory of God. We are encouraged. But that, that steadfastness, most believers, the average believer is not yet established in the truth of God's word. This is where the ministry of the word comes in. The assignment of the word of God is to help establish and mature believers. Why? Because if all we live by are miracles, signs, wonders, as important as they are, we will not be able to experience the fullness of God in our lives because a lot in the kingdom depends on growth and maturity. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Are we together? Make it a culture to always come with something to write. It is important. It is proof of value to the word of God that you have. And so by the grace of God, here we will trust God for grace. As much as we experience the manifest hand of God, we will focus very greatly on doctrine, truths that help and mature and establish believers to the end that we become steadfast, not missing in any area. Are we together? Let me give you an example of a few doctrinal truths in the Bible that are worth knowing number one truths that relate to the new birth and redemption it is important for instance that believers understand the entire scope of the work of salvation you will be amazed at how many believers and respectfully speaking even leaders in the body of christ who cannot intelligently articulate the work of redemption it's like a doctor with no knowledge of anatomy no knowledge of physiology how did you become a doctor? Are we together now? Yeah. These are foundational truths. Believers have to understand what happened from the beginning. They have to understand the fall of man. They have to understand Jesus as perfect theology. The mystery of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. These are foundational pillars. We may differ in our levels of our approach to ministry. But these are foundational pillars of the Christian faith. If they are not known, we cannot walk in victory. Truths like the identity and the authority of the believer in Christ. Paul, as part of his apostolic ministry, took out time all through the epistles, especially the book of Ephesians when you read. He took out time to give a very clear exegesis of the truth of God's word to help the believers understand their position in Christ. There is a positional advantage that we have in Christ. And believers must understand this. If we do not understand these basic truths, and then you go to deeper and weightier matters of the Spirit, you will find out that we become ever learning, but never coming into the experience, the knowledge of the truth. This is the tragedy of the average believer. We are not in ignorance, but there is, we have a deluge of spiritual truth whose relevance we cannot point in our lives we know almost every topic we know almost every great teaching but to be able to sequentially arrange them and produce constructive victory in our lives most times we do not know how to combine them the concept of sin the concept of righteousness the concept of uprightness the concept of holiness the concept of salvation the concept of the gospel. These are very important. I'm just running through very intelligent spiritual issues that every congregation, every man of God who intends to build a people of power and grace must ensure that somewhere in their growth process, these foundational truths are captured in their experiences. Lack of the understanding of these things will give the devil an edge over the believer. Are we together? Then the ministry of the word of God. This is a doctrinal truth that we must understand. What is the value of the word of God? The average believer studies the Bible, studies scripture, and exposes himself to spiritual truth just to ease the guilt of not looking spiritual or to conform to a religious ritual. The Bible talks about the logos of God. John 1 verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God very powerful scripture so you have to understand what the word of God is 
Because the Bible tells us that man shall not live by bread alone, but that he must live by every truth that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Listen, let me tell you, there are so many believers who want to walk in the reality of the power and the glory of God. Many sincere preachers, many in the body, they want to enjoy certain levels of victory, but they have not been taught, constructively taught, about the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Even though the Holy Spirit plays a very vital role in salvation, there is a separate encounter with the person and the office of the Holy Spirit. Are we together? Then we talk about kingdom living. We now begin to bring believers into the revelation of the kingdom. Jesus began to talk to us about the kingdom. What is the kingdom? The character of the kingdom. I'm showing you doctrinal truths that if ignored, there is no church happening. I guarantee you. Then kingdom concepts like faith, kingdom concepts like hope, like love, like peace. These are very powerful truths that must be taught the believer. You have to understand what the peace of God is. What it means to live and walk in love. The power of hope. The power of faith. The Bible talks about faith being a shield. It says, wherein with it will be able to quench every fiery dart of the enemy. Then we now come into subjects of the realm of the spirit. The reality of the satanic kingdom that has been so ignored by many people in an attempt to show the excellency of the reality of the finished work of Christ. We have ignored the fact that there is a devil roaming around our horizon and the Bible tells us to not be ignorant of his devices. This is where truths that deal and relate with spiritual warfare, the reality of the satanic kingdom, the fact that there are real demons who are out to sabotage the purposes of God in the life of the saints. And that if the saints are not equipped with the requisite level of spiritual intelligence, then we may not be able to walk in victory. Are we together? Then we come to the ministry of prayer. Prayer was such a powerful subject that the disciples came to Jesus and said, teach us to pray. So you don't just learn prayer by praying alone. You are taught how to pray. Their issue was not prayerlessness. Their issue was inaccurate prayer. There was something about the prayer of Jesus and the result that came from his prayer. And they said, teach us to pray. Then he began to teach them. He says, when you pray, pray thus. He didn't just say, recite these words. It's a spiritual formula. Abba, Father. When you pray, pray with the acknowledgement that there is a source, a sustainer, a defender. Then it says, which art in heaven. That means you will need faith in your prayer because it's not in your domain. You are interacting with two realms. Then hallowed be your name that you come to him with the spirit of reverence. Your kingdom come, prioritize the kingdom. Because if the kingdom comes, many things you want to ask for will no longer be needed. Jesus is teaching prayer so that when you go to the place of prayer you are not just shadow boxing and dissipating spiritual energy that cannot produce results this is largely what we do just because we dissipate a lot of spiritual energy we convince ourselves that on the strength of the enormity of the energy that is dissipated we are making contact in the spirit it may not be so one man prayed and a territory was shot it was it was deprived of rain one correct prayer then we talk about the subject of kingdom advancement listen if you're a man of god here you may want to write some of these things down and build a catalog of your spiritual your mentorship system to the members this this is these are the truths that members should come to receive they are not opinions, they are doctrines. These are the truths, the pillars upon which the maturity of the saints depend on. Kingdom advance. If believers are not, king, are not taught kingdom advance, we are going to live purposeless lives, acquiring things that have no eternal value. 
what gives credence to subjects like prosperity and the rest is kingdom. Subjects like prosperity, health, advancement, success, they find their correct bearing when they are, the subjects are dealt with with respect to kingdom. If kingdom is not in view, it is risky and dangerous, even destructive, to mentor people and teach them these things. Because all of these things are spiritual arsenals that were supposed to help the believer to become efficient to an end. The end is thy kingdom come. Are we still together? Then we talk about subjects like purpose and destiny. Never downplay the fact that believers need to find fulfillment in their lives. They will not indefinitely just be career people. They will not indefinitely just be church goers for many years. Sooner or later, they will have to confront the subject of meaning. What is my life about? Nobody will waste his time indefinitely, no matter how sincere you are as a man of God, as a preacher, as a spiritual platform. You must be able to mentor the people to find meaning for their lives. It is lack of meaning that exposes people to all kinds of violence. When people do not live for a cause that is bigger than their needs, they can become prey to the devil. Purpose and destiny, very powerful. It defines the coordinate for your focus. It gives you discipline. It helps to channel your energy constructively. So you wake up in the morning justifiably so. And you sleep late. You sleep in the night with joy in your heart. Knowing that you're making constructive advancement. Then we have to talk about truths like the end times. The reality of the afterlife. It's a subject that many people may not want to touch. The Bible says if our hope is only in this life, this world, it says we are of all men most miserable. To understand the gravity of that statement, you have to examine how miserable men look. Because the Bible says you are, a miserable man at any level is not a good sight. And then the Bible says you are of all men most miserable. It is true that Jesus is coming back. And my goodness, there are all kinds of doctrinal and theological and archaeological arguments as to it. Believers must be able to find comfort. Why? Because in a congregation like this, sincerely speaking, even though it is not our intention, as time progresses, people will lose, will, will lose loved ones. Is that true? People will have to mourn loved ones either because their time is up or for some reason. And there must be a doctrinal foundation that gives them strength at that point. It takes more than an impulsive comfort for two, three days. People must derive sustainable strength on a revelation of what happens after this life. It is on the strength of that you can now say, like Paul, for, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. So if you declare long life, it's not out of fear. It's because you need time to make kingdom come happen. But if at all the flight comes, you go with joy, knowing that you have cheated death already. Is God helping us? These are the doctrinal truths. These are like spiritual classes, schools of the spirit that you have to pass through. You cannot go through these things and still be weak and be tossed to and fro, the Bible says. It is for this that the Bible says, Ephesians chapter 4, when you read from verse 10, to this end, the Bible says, he gave unto some apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, for the maturing, the equipping of the saints, that the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry to the end that will attain that stature in the spirit. It says, not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men, wherein they lie to deceive. Stability comes through doctrine. Then, we will not also neglect matters of life, like the economic system of the kingdom. Look at me. Did you know that the kingdom of God has an economic system that must be studied? There are different systems all across this cosmos but god has his economic system that means there is a kingdom provision for the welfare of the saints it is irresponsible and i submit to you with all due respect it is irresponsible for a man of god to have the privilege of 
been with a congregation for many years and not expose them to the economic system of the kingdom because these are matters of life it's not just about prayer and trusting God to come. There are school fees to be paid. There are real issues that pertain unto life. And if believers are not taught, they will have to adopt any option that is available. And most of the options, you would have to trade your soul in exchange. So he said, what shall it profit a man if you will gain? These are business languages. Gain the world and lose your soul. It says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. There is an economic system designed for the kingdom. And I will respectfully observe that the challenge with the body of Christ is that most times our doctrines are inaccurately communicated. That means it is it, it garnished with a plethora of imbalances. So on one hand, we have people who teach believers, for instance, that all it takes to prosper is just to focus on the spiritual laws of tithing and giving and sowing. And that is wonderful. There is a place for that. And then they ignore the fact that there are principles of value and productivity that synergize themselves together to make believers exceptional. So believers continue to obey the spiritual laws. The spiritual laws are responsible for the arrival of the blessings. But the natural laws are their right, they are responsible for the sustenance. If you do not know this, you will keep having short lived testimonies. One breakthrough, and then after five years, another one comes. The economic system of the kingdom. Then, of course, we have to teach believers on things that relate to relationships, family life. We are relational beings. The command, be fruitful, is a very serious command. Be fruitful there does not just mean have children. Be fruitful means be relational. Because everything multiplies through relationships. Your business, your job, your work with God. And until we understand principles of relationship, prophecy will keep bringing opportunities that lack of knowledge of relationships will keep cancelling out of believers' lives. There are many people who receive prophetic words. May God connect you to destiny helpers. May God lift you. They say amen. But not understanding the requisite principles for maintaining and attracting relationships. They will be spiritual, praying tongues. But if you do not have this as a pastor, as a man of God, you will never have sustainable membership. Because the membership affects people before your members. And there are, there, there are principles, not only spiritual principles, psychological principles that must be in place. Let me tell you, human beings are not stupid. They will not indefinitely be loyal to someone and a cause without an interplay of these truths. If you are with me, say Amen. Probably God is revealing to someone right now. This is just an introduction. Once you've heard me speak, God is telling you, you see the area you have ignored. The area of loophole, the area of, of ignorance, the area of carelessness in your life becomes the access point of Satan. Now, we celebrated wonderful testimonies here from people who miraculously, within a week, Look, the wonder-working power of God. Now, the anointing has played its own course. It's left for them to understand the principles of relationship now to sustain that breakthrough. Is that true? So, receiving a prophetic word is not enough. You have to be equipped with truths like the law of honor to understand these principles. So, when you say a believer is matured, you don't just mean he has been around spiritual things for a long time. No. It means that he has actively been mentored. Believers must submit themselves to mentorship. Not the idea of mentorship we have in our world today that has become an evil and a destructive usurping of the right and the will of men. I'm talking of mentorship, a system where you submit yourself to a body of spiritual truth to the end that you'll be edified and be matured. This is the assignment of doctrine. Are we blessed? To see you high and lifted up You are shining in the light of your glory For our 
Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So for tonight, just spare me a few minutes and we're done. Listen, week in, week out, when you come, did you know why we pray that God should bring people? We don't pray for people just to celebrate a crowd. It's more than that. It's a passion to reach as many people. There are 3.2 million people, demographically speaking, in this city. If we are unable to reach at least 300,000 people with the truth of God's word to mature them, we are wasting your time and we are wasting God's time. <laughs> yes. You have to believe this. So, when you are dragging someone to church, you are not trying to help a ministry grow. You are looking at him and like a doctor. You can scan through his life. While he comes to say, my life, you can see the spiritual gaps. You, you know the laws he's breaking in an instant. And you know if God does not help this man, just agreeing and praying will not solve the problem. Because the truths that this person needs to learn are many. It is on the, that is what sponsors your compassion. When you draw someone to the house of God, you are already excited. Because more than an instant miracle, he now has the opportunity to be immersed in this spiritual truth. So he leaves that service with an enlightened understanding. And he will thank you for it. While the word of God is coming, he can see the gaps in his life. There is a grace given to a man that can open the eyes of men. It's the grace that causes all men to see. So you can see your life in light of this truth. And you can say, wow, I now see why my church is not growing. It's not because I'm not from this city. I now see this may be what I may be doing wrong. And then because you are told to receive with meekness the engrafted word. You are not ashamed of God exposing your area of growth. It's like saying you are better today than you were yesterday. And you receive it with truth. Then you go back like the foxes of Samson. And you will do mighty and terrible things for the kingdom. This is what I seek by the Spirit of God that will happen in our lives. That week in, let me tell you the truth. I give you a guarantee. If you come here week in, week out, and you cannot constructively measure your spiritual growth, I am wasting your time. Please look for something important and do with your life. Are we together? Many times we teach that all you need, one encounter with the word, is all you need. That's a very sincere statement, but that's incomplete. Many people have encountered the word for many years. It is the truth that is accurately taught, that you receive with understanding, and you engage appropriately, that produces for you. Not the truth available. Access to truth does not transform. No. It must be accurately taught. Then it must be understood. Then it must be received by faith. The principles contained therein applied diligently. 
then you can commit God's integrity to perform. Hallelujah. Let's talk about spiritual growth tonight. Let's start from there. We are, we are starting from the very foundation. This is a new work. And so we'll just start and trust God for grace to build us as far as He can help us. If we're together, say Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. Please let's rush. We have to trust God for grace to be very fast tonight. And then we pray. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. We are discussing the subject of spiritual growth. Please read with me if you can see it projected inside and outside. Ready? Read. When I was a child, uh -huh, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man... I put away childish things. Please keep that scripture there. Paul is admonishing the church in Corinth, part of his apostolic ministry. And he's talking about the characteristic features that represent childishness in the kingdom. That you know a child, number one, by how you speak. You know a child, number two, by your level of spiritual understanding. Are we together? You know a child by your thought process. Because your life is a reflection of your thoughts. So we can piece this together and accurately gauge the spiritual level of a man. The way that you speak, your degree of comprehension and the way you think, the way you process spiritual things. When I was a child, he said, this also talks about transition. When I was, once upon a time he was a child. This is a very powerful message because it means men can grow. It's a, it's a revelation. I can come out of my former self into a new version of me. That means the version you saw last week. While you are talking about that one, I have grown. You are talking about the version that cannot heal the sick. You are talking about the version that is ignorant. And that we can evolve into superior dimensions of ourselves in this kingdom. Very powerful. So you can see one who is weak. He may even come out for salvation prayer. And you watch that person and you're like, wow. When is this guy going to understand spiritual things? Just give the person the atmosphere of growth. And sometimes as little as weeks. Under a very correct system of growth. You will be surprised what will happen to that person. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. Understood as a child. And I thought as a child. But when I became a man, what happened? I pushed childish things. Childish speaking, childish understanding, childish thinking. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Write this down, please. Growth refers to increase in size, increase in capacity, increase in convictions, increase in resources. Growth refers to increase of all kinds. Increase in size, for instance. Increase in capacity. Increase in convictions. Increase in resources. God expects believers to grow. The Bible is full of um, admonishments for believers to grow. God desires that we grow biologically. God desires that we grow intellectually. God desires that we grow career-wise for career people. God desires that we grow financially like we spoke about earlier on. But for this, for tonight, the subject of focus is spiritual growth. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. The Bible says, and Jesus grew or he increased. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. And Jesus increased, the Bible says. Jesus, your Jesus, had to grow. He increased in wisdom in stature and in favor with God and with man. Hallelujah. Write this down please. Spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a Christian. Not necessarily. Luke chapter 11 and verse 52. Spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a Christian. Just because you gave your life to Jesus in 1990 or 2000 or 2010, the, the passage of time does not necessarily equate spiritual growth. Listen to this. Jesus is speaking to the scribes. He says, Woe to you lawyers, 
for you have taken the key of knowledge. You've been here for a long time. You have refused to enter yourself and you have stopped others from entering. Most times we pride ourselves just because we have memory of the day that we came out to make an altar call. And you hear people say things like, I have been a Christian for 20 years. Now that's what's been, uh, that's what's um, our applause. I'm not downplaying it. But I'm saying just because you gave your life to Christ, it's like someone who bought a car in 2000. And just because a car is in his house, he tells you he's a driver. No. The presence of a car does not necessarily mean the ability to drive Spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a Christian. Write this point again. Spiritual growth is not necessarily determined by church attendance and observance of religious activities. Spiritual growth is not necessarily determined by church attendance and observance of spiritual activities. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 7. That means just because you've been around church for a long time and you've been engaging in spiritual activities, it does not necessarily mean that you are growing spiritually. Paul was teaching his son, Timothy, doctrine. And he said there are a kind of people who are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Wow, preach, preacher. Wow, wonderful. And just because you've been falling under the anointing for a long time, just because you've been around crusades, you've been around great programs, when they say, who are those who have been in church for a long time, you will stand up. But when we look through your life, we do not see the indices that represent spiritual growth. Is God helping us? There is a tragedy. Please look up. There is a consequence for not contending for spiritual growth. If you are not exposed to the consequences of remaining a child in the spirit, you will not aspire for higher dimensions. Because you see, many times, and depending on what kind of spiritual platform we are exposed to, many times we find ourselves in situations where we are not encouraged to press into God. It's like the most important thing is to give your life to Jesus, like we say. And the moment you have received Jesus, that's all right. After all, whatever it is, it is heaven. There are severe consequences for remaining at that level. Biologically speaking, mothers, when you give birth to a child, you don't flog that child from day one for not walking. You give him some allowance. But after a year, two years, three years, you find out your child cannot walk, your child cannot talk, that becomes a medical issue. Is that true? I have put down here three Three tragedies that will befall any believer who does not contend for spiritual growth. Please walk with me. Let's hurry up. Is God blessing us tonight? Number one, the first tragedy that befalls a believer who does not contend for growth is in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. The Bible says, having their understanding darkened look up please it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart do you know what this means that means even though you have received the zoe life watch this you have received the life of god it does not mean it will be manifest in your life automatically the riches of that which you have received that resides in Christ is released through knowledge. And if you do not contend for spiritual growth, you may never actualize in experience the potentials that are captured in this life. So, two believers, come. This is my great general. Just come close to me. By the way, this is Sam, ladies and gentlemen. For many of you, you've heard me say Sam and... Those of you who have been blessed by the song you reign, Elohim. Here's the person who wrote the song. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Let me have your attention again. Watch this. Now, did you know that these guys can be born again at the same time? Are we together? Filled with the Holy Spirit at the same time. 
but this man may be subject to a very constructive mentorship system and five years down the line you will see the quality of his christian experience all wise you will see that the reality the riches the 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 manifestation of that life that he has so received when you look at it you will see the quality of his life this man even though truly he's given his life to christ you do not see evidences that demonstrate the reality of the victory of christ in his life the difference is not the love of god the same lord is rich unto all the difference is that one has submitted to a system that makes for growth whereas the other one has been stunted or wallowing around in religion decree and declare in the name of jesus say after me in the name of jesus i obtain grace to grow spiritually so the potential the potential that this life of god that we have this divine life is released as we grow if you do not grow it will only remain in theory that you are a partaker of this divine life but nothing in your life will show forth the excellency of that victory that is in christ are we together tragedy number two what happens to a believer who refuses to contend for growth galatians chapter 4 and verse 1 galatians chapter 4 and verse 1 now i say that an heir an heir means a partaker of a throne a, a a benefactor of an inheritance but for as long as he is a child he is no different from a servant some version says slave even though potentially he was designed to be lord of all look up please the bible says if you do not grow your experience as one who is in the kingdom and one who is outside the kingdom will be no different does it make sense to you why believers receive the same result as unbelievers it is because just receiving the life of christ and not contending for growth your results will not change the dynamics that make your life to release the victory that is in christ experientially is only released at the instance of growth oh, 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 oh. Tragedy number three. What is the third tragedy for refusing to contend for spiritual growth? Is found in Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11. Please give it to us. Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11. Watch this now. Paul again is teaching. He said, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered. Seeing that you are dull of hearing. We are reading to verse 14, verse 12 now. It says, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles or the doctrines of God, and have become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. 13. For everyone that useth milk, everyone that is a child, is what? Unskillful. Look up. Let me explain what this means to you. When you watch a consultant, when he looks at a patient, while the patient is talking, all of a sudden, the, the myriads of medical truths that he knows, everything is working in an instant. He looks at this and says, oh, I remember. There, we have one in a million of these cases. However, I think I know what to do about it. On the strength of his mastery. A student doctor can look at that and crack his brain and the information there is limited. So he can do his best, although he's a doctor in the making. He can even be a fresh graduate and not be able to do much. This is what it means to be unskillful. 
So if you do not grow spiritually, you can't be a blessing. Because when people speak to you, you don't know what law they are violating and how to help them. So you begin to come up with sympathetic statements like one day go better. And the Bible says you are unskillful. You are not like one who is moving with uncanny mastery. When you grow spiritually, if a family calls you as a man of God, we are in trouble. What is the trouble? All doors are closed uh -huh, immediately. The scriptures that will bail them out comes to you. You can almost tell them, I know what is wrong. I know what is wrong. It's powerful to know how to help people. Not just how to sympathize with people. You are a blessing to the degree to which you can help. Someone comes to you now and says, I hear that you are a member of this great ministry. Nothing is working in my life. Delays. There is... There's no restoration. The moment you hear restoration, you know all through scripture, everywhere there were losses is the prophetic that brought it back. So restoration is exclusively the ministry of the prophetic. So you don't just tell that person, let's pray. God help him. That's a careless prayer. You seek to introduce him to a true prophetic voice. They are taken for a pray and none say it. Restore. This is what it means to be skillful. Someone comes to you and says, I am gifted. I'm a graduate. But doors are not opening up. I have a business. And you know exactly what is there. Because you see, James 2.26 says, A body without a spirit is dead. The business is a body. Where is the spirit that gives it life? So you know what to introduce. Are you getting blessed? If you refuse to grow spiritually, you become unskilled. You cannot help yourself and you cannot help people. This is the tragedy with the book. It's responsible for what outcome. Mastery in the spirit is to be able to connect spiritual laws and their desired outcomes. So when you see people and they cry, you know what spiritual law to help them with. Like a doctor, when a patient says, I'm running temperature and um, I've not been able to eat, I even threw up. You are not a doctor, but help me guess what you think is wrong. Who taught you that although you are not a doctor notice you did not say Ronnie's stomach but don't you know that cholera he also vomits why didn't you say cholera because there are certain things you have been taught through experience that when a patient behaves like this this is how to help the person this can happen to you spiritually listen to me I'm teaching you this so after the grace, some of you will run home and say, Come, I found what the problem is. I know exactly why this family is not rising. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. With accuracy, you can know. When mama comes to say, Are you seeing this? I went to bed and I had a dream. I saw someone speaking to me. And he said, in this family, for the last hundred years, nobody has risen. And everyone is putting their hand on their head and you now join them. What is the excellency of your spiritual investment? But the issue is not just saying, let's pray, don't mind the devil. You say that thing, you will die like a chicken. Because many people have arrogantly made bold claims. Don't stand before Pharaoh until you see the burning bush. If you have not seen the burning bush, leave Pharaoh alone. Your encounter with the burning bush is what supplies the strength and stamina. You can stand before Pharaoh and say, Thus say yet not me, the one I met. Let my people go. Because Pharaoh is stubborn. God does not hide the fact that Pharaoh is stubborn. He will say, Oh, God spoke, go. <clears throat> he will say, Who is that? You have to show him a token of your encounter that I really met him. So you don't talk like people who are not born again. When believers are lamenting, what is wrong? You go to scripture. What are the truths? The assignment of men of God is to expose you to the various doctrinal bodies of truth that equip you so that you are equipped with sufficient spiritual arsenals on the strength of that you can now go if you are in your office and someone beats his chest and say 
except I am not this, you will not rise. You don't need to start talking as if you are not born. Ah, mm, mm, leave him in peace. That man you see, you should even be pitying him while he's speaking. Based on what you know, if you actually engage what you know, you know that it will cause more destruction for that man. So you will search which one can manage the situation and leave the man as a witness. Listen, sit down. Please don't be excited for nothing. Look at me. This is how dominion is produced. Dominion is not just an impartation. It's the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. You surround yourself with the principles of the kingdom like chariots. They make you a wonder to behold. So when you say you are matured in the spirit, it's not just by physical stature. It's not by the huskiness of the voice. It's on the strength of the spiritual arsenals you have so pieced together. You have fine-tuned them. They are like weapons of war. You shoot them with the accuracy of the Benjamites. One sling and Goliath goes down. Low, low, low like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Cover us with your wings. Go, go, go like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Cover us with your wings. Please sit down. Is God helping us? Yes. So, all of the dimensions that we seek to walk in in the kingdom. They have a body of spiritual truth that is responsible for their lifting. You are a blessing only when you move with these truths. They follow you. Listen, the Bible said, These signs shall follow them that believe. Do you know what that means? When I see what is following you, it's a report card to what you believe. So when I see favor and open doors following you, they are not following you. They are following what you believe. If you want to drive them, don't ask them to go. Change what you believe. They will leave. There are many things we do not want in our lives. You don't drive them by saying, leave me. They are, were designed to honor that belief. If you take it out of your life, they will leave you with it. Hallelujah. Let's wrap up tonight. Indices to measure spiritual growth. Let me give you four spiritual indices that help the believer to measure spiritual growth. Pray in the Spirit in one minute as you are seated. Four indices that help the believer to measure spiritual growth. Thank you, Jesus. Ah. From the pages of my heart, let my worship begin that never ends. Someone's life is changing, my goodness. From the pages of my heart, let my worship begin that never ends. To the God of all flesh, you're my God and your your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Oh my God, your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Now. Please let me have your attention. We are about to measure to what degree we have grown in the spirit. And with it challenge ourselves. Let me give you an advice. Never be ashamed when the word of God comes. Sustain the ability to tremble at his word without any sense of shame. When Minister Frecker was here, he said we should lift our hands like children. That is the attitude. He said let the little children come to me. He says, do not forbid them for, for such 
The kingdom of God requires childlike approach. I come to you with my heart open. And he vets you in light of his truth. Then you will repent. Repentance is not a word for sinners. It's the name given to the process that realigns you back to God's patterns. It's called repentance. Number one. The first index that measures your spiritual growth in this kingdom. Write it please. Is your degree of conformity to the image of and the character of Jesus in experience. Of Jesus experientially or in experience. Colossians chapter 1, chapter 3 from verse 1 to 15. Oh dear. Let's see if we can hurry up and just walk on these scriptures. Colossians 1 verse 3. It says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated, on the right hand of God. Keep reading. Verse 2. It says, set your affections. He's showing you a litmus test for your spiritual life. Set your affection. Something about your affection reveals your level of growth. Set your affection on things above. He never said, don't have the things of the earth. But set your affection. When your obsession becomes on money, on titles, on I must make it, I must achieve it. It is good to aspire to be great. But if that's what controls your heart, you are far from growth. Set your affection, let's hurry up, on things above, not on things of the earth. Verse 3. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Verse 4. Very quickly, I'll run through it. It says, when Christ who is our life shall appear, then ye sh shall ye also appear with him in glory. Uh -huh. Now, mortify therefore your members. That means you have a responsibility. Mortify your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil, what's that word? And covetousness, which is idolatry. Verse Verse 6, it says, For which things sake the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience. 7, In the which ye also walk in some time when ye lived in them. 8, But now put off all these. Believers, are we together? Maybe you should read the rest from here. 1, Anger. Number 2, Number 3, Number 4, Number 5, Nigerians, repeat number five. Dear wonderful citizens of this great country, reveal, re, try number five again. Number verse nine. La, hi, ah, do I say this one now? <laughs> Don't worry, we are together. God is helping us. We are growing in the name of Jesus Christ. He says, lie not to one another. Seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Verse 10. And have put on a new man. Hallelujah. That new man is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Verse 11. We are reading to 15. Where there is neither Yoruba, nor Hausa, nor South South, nor Northern, nor Middle Beltan. It says, but Christ is all and in all. Let me tell you this. You really know you are transformed when it is difficult for people to connect you with a physical territory. It shouldn't be so obvious that someone sees you and says, you are behaving like them. Where are you from? Then it helps you to accurately get where you are coming from. It is proof that you are not transformed. You should be so transformed, we, we, should, be, we should be at a loss to connect you to a physical territory. That when you tell people where you are coming from, they say it's not true. How come you are so refined? You tell them the process is called growth. Growth. Called out of every tribe and tongue and nation. Into a reality that is beyond the limitations of territory. Let's finish up the scripture. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved. Uh -huh, bowels of mercy. Uh -huh, kindness. Humbleness of mind. Meekness. Long-suffering, 13. 
forbearing one another and forgiving one another. It says, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. 14. It says, above all these things, put on love. Charity there is love. He calls it the bond of maturity, the zenith of your maturity. We are coming there. 15, the last verse. It says, and let the peace of God garrison your heart to the which also ye are called in one body and in all that you do, do not forget to be thankful. So, ingratitude is proof that you are a child. Are we blessed? Write this scripture, we may not read it. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 7. It tells us we can add to our faith certain spiritual qualities. It says, add to your faith virtue. Virtue means moral excellence. Add to virtue knowledge. Since they projected it, let's just read on verse 6. Add to knowledge self-control or temperance. Add to self-control patience. Add to patience godliness. 7. Add to godliness brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. This love thing again. Is God helping us? The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, popular scripture and verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit. While I was studying for this meeting, if we can have it, um, if we can have it, give us the Passion Translation. Is that possible? The Passion Translation. Very powerful. The Passion Translation. If, if we can't get that, that that's alright. The Passion Translation. It puts it in a very, very exceptional and interesting way. That's alright. You can, you can just give us the version we have if the Passion Translation is not there. But it's, it's really very powerful. I just thought that if we look at it... Um, Okay, yeah, let's just go back to King James. Apologize for that. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. The Passion Translation says, the, the, it says, the fruit which the Holy Spirit walks out through a recreated human spirit is love expressed in its various forms. Then it now begins to say joy, peace. Very, very powerful. Are we together? But let's work with what we have. The Bible says the fruit of the Spirit, that means the fruit that the Holy Spirit produces in a recreated human spirit is love. And um, in its, the original translation is not just love, joy, peace. It's just love. One word, love. But that that love expresses itself in joy. Are we together? Peace. So joy is a subset of love. Peace is a subset of love. Long suffering or patience, gentleness, goodness, faith. 23. Meekness, temperance. It says, against such, there is no law. There is no prohibition to walking in this. Your degree of conformity to the image and the character of Christ. When people look at you, they should remember Jesus, not you. The more they see you, you should be the clearest representation of Jesus that they can see. Not by preaching. Something about the dexterity of the formation of Christ in you should make people desire Jesus. Are we together? It is my prayer all the time that Christ be formed in me. The formation of Christ. It is my prayer that I will not just be a man of God who is preaching, but that at least my life becomes a worthy representation. That you can look at your life and say, my God, this man truly is a reflection of Jesus. It's a noble comment. It's more than saying you're a successful man. You are beautiful in all your ways. That's what happens when you become like him. You are beautiful in all your ways. Character. We must trust God.
us by the grace of God to be men and women of solid character. If your preaching is the only thing that reveals you as a Christian, you are not a solid Christian. If your seed is the only thing that shows you are a Christian, if your praying in tongues is the only thing that shows you are a Christian, something is wrong. Look at those who follow Jesus. Even when they tried to deny him, they had been so transformed. They looked at them and said, no, no, no. You are lying that you don't know him, but that there is something. Can you be that transformed that no matter how you pretend, someone will say, Kai, it looks like you are a pastor. You say, well, I, I'm just, I'm just, they say, no, 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 no. Men shall call you ministers of our God. That in your office, the moment they want to bribe, as soon as you enter, they stop. You don't say anything, you don't judge. Blessings to everybody, this is the day the Lord has made. Your presence becomes such an inconvenience to darkness. Character. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh. it all belongs to you. My heart, my life, and everything that I have. It all belongs to you. Oh. Let's hurry up. We're wrapping up. Number two, the second biblical index to measure your spiritual growth is your depth of comprehension. Of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. Index number two. Your depth of comprehension. Your depth of knowledge. Your depth of understanding of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. The degree to which you have an understanding of the principles that govern this kingdom. Is the degree to which you are matured spiritually. Look up please. The Bible says in Matthew 25 when you read from verse 14, the parable of the talents. I'll just speak one or two things there. Give us verse 14 please. Matthew 25. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants, watch this, and delivered unto them his goods. Verse 15. It says he gave unto one, how many talents? Help me, five talents. Number two to the other, two talents. And then the third one. It says, unto every man according to his several ability. He did not give them according to his love for them. Meaning that he had watched them for a while. And the end of the story shows he was correct. Because the man with five was the most responsible. The, one, the man with five had a lot to fight. He had pride to fight. Being the one with the highest talent. He overcame pride and was still focused and diligent. The man with two had jealousy to fight. Because knowing there was somebody above him, he conquered jealousy and still produced that. The man with one, you bury seeds, not talents. And he buried the, the talent and came. You can see that he was already offended. When they asked for him, he says, you are a hard man. You like reaping where you didn't sow. And so I thought to even pity you, I buried it. Here is your talent. And he said, you are a wicked, number one. Number two, unprofitable servant. Hallelujah. God gives unto men according to their ability that has come from their growth. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. It says, now unto him who is able... To do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. Here's the scripture. Not according to his power. According to the power that works in us. The dam brings water. But the, the amount of water that ends up in your bucket is according to the size of the tap. Not according to the potential of the dam. You can turn your tap just once. And it will be a drop. And it will take you almost a day to have a bucket full. Is that true? And someone can turn the tap very fast. And within a minute, the bucket is full. The problem is not the dam. The dam has the potential to fill as many buckets. 
according to the power that works in us the capacity the day i found this i found out that the limitation in the dispensing of the grace of god is not just god's problem there is something about my capacity that needs to be built so that I can hold superior dimensions of His presence and it became my pursuit to enlarge. Luke chapter 19 from verse 41 and 42. Jesus lamented two reasons why Jesus cried in the Bible. Number one was at John Lazarus' tomb when he wept because of his compassion. Second was this over Jerusalem. Three reasons I meant to say. See the third, well, he, the Bible says he cried, he was sweat, but well, it was like drops of blood. It says when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Why did he weep? 42. Saying, if thou hast known even thou at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto your peace, he says, but now they are hid from your eyes. Jesus wept over Jerusalem and said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. That's the original translation. If you had known, even in this your time, the things that pertain to your peace. Peace here means your wholeness. But now they are hid from your eyes. We must contend for spiritual truth. Listen to me. We must contend for dimensions of truth that equip us and help us to be matured to manifest the fullness of the life and the power of God. Number three, the third biblical index that measures spiritual growth, write it down, is the outworkings of the power of God in and through your life. We know that you are matured to the degree to which we can see the tangible manifestation of the power and the ability of the Spirit in your life. The outworkings of the ability of the Spirit of God in your life. Please write this down. I think I confused two scriptures. Let me give you a scripture that had to do with depth of comprehension. 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 20. It says, be not children in understanding. I'm seeing two scriptures I omitted here. Be not children in understanding. 1 Corinthians 14, 20. Be not children in understanding. Write it down, please. Then write down Colossians 1 verse 9. The Bible says Paul was praying over the church in Colossae. That's over point 2 now. That you might be filled with the knowledge of his will, wisdom and spiritual understanding. Hallelujah. The outworkings of his power in your life. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 20. The Bible says, but in a great house. Look at me, please. It is not the vessels that make the house great. It is the builder. Even though there are all kinds of vessels, it's still called a great house. But in a great house, please keep the scripture there. It says, There are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of clay. It says some vessels are destined unto honor. Some vessels are unto dishonor. What is the condition? Verse 2. If a man will purge himself from this, prune yourself from this, you shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Let me tell you this. By the grace of God, I know a bit about the power of God. I know a bit about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I have seen the power and the grace of God. I understand a bit about the dynamics of the anointing. I can tell you this. The vessel is a very important subject as far as impartation and the administration of spiritual power is concerned. The vessel can make the oil look small. In 2 Kings chapter 4, the woman who was owing her husband died. The Bible says the prophet came and said, what do you have in your house? He said, nothing. That little jar that could feed her was listening to the conversation too. Because the anointing is a living thing. 
So the anointing was sharing and saying, you are calling me small. And the prophet said, you don't know. The problem is not the oil. The problem is the kind of vessel holding it. Go and borrow vessels. Expand. He said, borrow not a few. When she borrowed, it now said to pour the oil. The oil began to multiply to assume the shape of the vessel. The anointing will only be as effective as the maturity of the vessel administering it. The outworkings of the power of God. There has to come a time in your life, whether you are in ministry or not, active ministry like we know. You cannot remain with God, growing spiritually, truly, and then get to a point where the outworkings of the power of God is not visible in your life. It's impossible. Someday, you should be able to speak over someone and it's God's change. Someday, you should be able to come into your family. Help him, please. There has to be the reality. Listen to me, please. If you're a man of God here, yeah, let me tell you, it's not all about power manifestation, but there has to be a, an investment of the Spirit upon your life. There must be a signature of the Spirit. Then your world become like the words of God. That lady wearing black. I'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head. Yes. That lady looking at me. I stretch my hands right now. Something is happening to you. Help her please. I'm seeing oil being poured on her. This is what happens. This is the place for my car. testimony that was shared here was produced by the power of the Holy Spirit. Your Bible says his divine power. It says according as his divine power has given us. The giver is his divine power. If you stand and watch doors like that, you will watch it forever. You will need to obtain power from on high. Samson remained helpless provided there was no power. But when grace came upon his life, you see so when you come to church like this 
Don't see this strange. Is it not written in your Bible that well Peter yet speak these things? It says the Holy Ghost fell on them that had him. So you go back home with an experience. And like the psalmist you can say, I was glad when they said to me, let us go. How could your life remain the same? My brothers and my sisters, it's impossible. Not the God of the Bible. The power of the Holy Ghost. I believe in power. I've had the opportunity in ministry to see what power can do to lives. Political careers. It takes power to enthrone kings. This is not just prophecy. When you speak, there must be grace that backs it. I am a man under authority, the centurion said. And I can tell one, go and he goeth. The power is and he goeth. Not that I said go. I said go and he goeth. Come and he cometh. So you say open and it opens. Close and it closes. Listen, may grace come on your life this night. That many of you will return back home. And in the name of Jesus, you will stand. I'm speaking by the Spirit. Help them, please. I decree and declare, you will go back home like the foxes of Samson, carrying supernatural power, power to dislodge the workings of darkness. In the name of, help that woman, please. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. We're wrapping up. Can I speak to you? Everything that has refused to work, by this time next week, I stand by the Spirit and the grace of God. In the name of Jesus, I command it to begin to walk. I speak by the Spirit of God. Help, help that woman, please. Every response you should receive, you heard their testimonies. I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood. Every frustration over over your destiny, I release you from it now. Please sit down. We're wrapping up. This is Koinonia. Number four. The fourth and the last index for measuring your spiritual growth is called your love life. We're wrapping up. Hali Selema Shola Haskabranda Gaduziata. I'm opening doors, opening doors. That's what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. I'm opening doors. You will think I'm joking, but you'll be surprised to see what happens. I am opening doors. This is what God is saying. I said before you, He says, an open door that no man can shut. I am opening doors. This God speaking to someone. I don't know who that person is, but you came here with hunger. I stand by the grace from heaven and I declare those doors, those doors be open for the sake of His majesty. Be open. Be open in the name of Jesus. Please sit down. Help that woman, please. Please sit down. We're wrapping up. Listen to me. Please, next week, don't come to church alone. Don't come to church alone. Don't leave your loved ones behind. No. Even if they will sit on the roof, let them sit there. One encounter with the power of God can open ages, chapters that have been closed. Hallelujah. We are wrapping up. We have about 10 minutes and we are done for tonight. Please be patient with me. Listen, please. The fourth index for measuring your spiritual growth according to scripture is your love life. When you read 1 John chapter 4, this is a very important subject. Your love life. Madam, that woman, come. No, 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 you, please you don't have to stand up at random. Where are you coming from? What's your name? I'm hearing a name of Payemi. What's your name? Of Payemi. 
the Lord is saying I should tell you this week coming this week you see coming from Monday tomorrow you will come and stand here the way doors will open in your life it will surprise you I stretch my hands and I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ you drink of this grace and you return back with strange testimonies in the name of Jesus God bless you let's finish up first John chapter 7 chapter 4 please chapter 4 from verse 7 let's hurry up please we're wrapping up it says beloved let us love one another for love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God verse 8 it says he that loveth not knoweth not God for God is love keep verse 8 but the text is down to 21 it says whoever does not love it is proof that you don't know God no matter how you convince yourself something about your love life if you love God and hate men you are not born again many people love Jesus only because they can't see him if they see Jesus for one week he will join all those they have hated I love him with all my heart. Let me tell you this. One of the secrets to the grace of God upon my life is not just prayer and fasting alone. It is sincere love. God has given me that grace and it's been a prayer. Lord, may I not use people. May I not use members to make a name. Let, let them see the passion, the love. That whilst you are sleeping, I'm praying for you and I'm saying, Lord, lift them open doors for them huh not just coming to collect to bless my greatest joy is not my lifting my greatest joy is your rising hallelujah your love life john 13 and verse 35 by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples not when you pray in tongues not when you preach well, not when you share revelations. 1335, John. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. The first core value, help that lady. The first core value in this ministry is not power, it's love. Love is very powerful. First Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 31. Very interesting scripture as we seek to wrap up. Very powerful scripture. Never forget this for the rest of your life. Haven't discussed the manifestation, the gifts of the Spirit, as charismatic as they are. It says, but covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet, I show you, after prophecy, after word of knowledge, after healing, I show you a more excellent way. 13 verse 1. What is the more excellent way? The way to do it in love. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am become as a sounding brass. Oh dear. I wish we can get the voice or that well for next time. I'm sure that our media will help us with that. I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. It says verse 2. Let's go to verse 2 now. It says if I have the gift of prophecy and I understand all mysteries. If you become this man, people will look for you till they kill you. You know all mysteries and prophecy and you have all knowledge. You have all faith. You can move mountains but you do not have love. He says, I am nothing. Look how little we weigh in the spirit without love. In the physical, they can be clapping Apostle Joshua Selman. But in the realm of the spirit, you weigh so small. Verse 3. The Bible says, If I donate all my goods to feed the poor, I give my body to be burned, and I do not have love. It says, I gain nothing. Verse 4. Let's hurry up, please. Love is patient if it is true love. Love is kind if it is true love. Love does not envy. Nigerians, love is not boastful. It is not conceited. Verse 5. It says, does not act improperly. Love is not selfish. It's not easily provoked or easily angered. Does not keep a record of wrongs. 
verse 6 it says finds no joy in unrighteousness but rejoices in the truth seven we're almost there it says it bears all things believes all things hopes all things endures all things verse 8 this is the love you talk about love never fails now we can go back to kjv so that we can wrap it up it says verse 9 for we know in part love never fails listen to my message love never fails business people if the bible tells you there is something that does not fail look for it that means whatever is failing add love to it it will change the equation love never fails but whether there be prophecies they shall fail the most accurate of us is still limited whether there be tongues they shall cease whether there be knowledge it shall vanish away my goodness verse 9 it says for we know in part and we prophesy in part verse 10 but when that which is perfect is come that which is imperfect shall go away 11 it says when i was a child back to our scripture now let's go to verse 12 we've read that we have to rush it says for now we see through a glass darkly but face to face we know in part then we shall even know as we are known 13 and now there abided faith that moves mountains if you have faith in today's world you are a great mountain mover if you have hope there is no shame for you because hope has a way of eroding shame it says and of these three the greatest is love the greatest is not power the greatest is not signs and wonders the greatest is not prophecy and revelatory gifts. The, pro the greatest is not accuracy of the exegesis of doctrine. Those things are wonderful. But according to divine rankings, the zenith of your transformation is not knowledge. It's love. Love. It is my desire that more than preaching, that I will truly become a lover of God, and a lover of men to love men to love men sincerely you are not spiritually growing to the degree to which you pile hate in your heart you have all kinds of black books no no tonight may be a word from the Lord and say look you need to pack up that nonsense you need to be light to fly when you are heavy this weight press you down it says, seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, right? And the sin that doth easily beset us, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. We are going to pray. And ask the Lord to grant us grace, to desire growth from the depth of your heart. God is training us. God is building us. Please rise up on your feet. Two prayer points tonight very quickly. Prayer point number one. Father, grant me the grace. The grace to grow intentionally. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Inside, outside, lift your voice and pray. The grace to grow intentionally. I am tired of this level in the spirit. I desire to grow. From today, I make my spiritual growth an intentional pursuit. There is a lot that depends on my growth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The last prayer point. Father, grant me the grace to reveal Jesus from today through my life, through all of these dimensions. Are we together now? Through my character, through the dexterity of my spiritual understanding, through the outworkings of the power of the Holy Spirit in my life, and by the demonstration of love, let men see Christ exalted, Christ revealed in my life. Lift your voice and pray. Those outside pray, overflows pray, following online lift your voice and pray
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm about to make the altar call. Please be patient. There are a few very important announcements I need to communicate before we wrap up for tonight. But there are people here listening. Some of you came here, you were invited. Some of you are in the overflows. Some outside, some following online from whatever nation. And you are saying, Apostle, hearing you speak, I cannot for sure say that Jesus is Lord of my life. I have a desire for Him, but I don't seem to have truly found Him. Others are saying, one time I gave my life to Jesus, but as it is now, my life has gone haywire and I need to bring my life back to order. These two categories of people. Now, for all of the overflows and outside, you just move to your projector screen and then those in the main auditorium, I'd like you to run and come and stand here. It will be my joy and my honor to lead you to Jesus. I'll count one to five. Please, I'd like you to come. One. Let's honor them, Koinonia. Come to Jesus. God bless you. Win that war tonight. Win that war tonight. Win that war. God bless you. Keep coming. Don't be ashamed of anyone. No one condemns you. This is a house of love. Come. 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 He's giving you a new beginning. Come. All overflows. Move to your overflows. Look at these our wonderful children. Let's celebrate them. Come. Come. Minister Freke taught us and he said if he's not in his presence and if it is not by his hand, if it is not by his word, it's not just don't let me have it. You really can't have it. You have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. You have decided to follow Jesus. No When the Titanic sank, there were only two names. If ever you were saved, there was your name. If you were lost, your name was there. There's nothing like being in between. No. If you are not saved, you are not saved. If you are not sure, you are not saved. I salute every single one of you. Listen, until the day Jesus comes, we will never stop participating in the global harvest we must sit with that souls come to jesus every day someday when we're in heaven we're going to see these blessed people and they will look at us and say thank god thank god for clapping for me while i came for i am alive that was changed thank you for giving to the lord I am so glad you came. My dear ones, look at me. We are standing before Jesus, not just Joshua Selman. Those following online, those in the overflows, let there be someone there to guide them. I want to lead you to make this most noble prayer. It's greater than receiving an award. It's greater than receiving an employment letter. It's greater than rising up from a wheelchair. This is the security of your eternal destiny. Lift your right hand high to the heavens. Pray this from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. I love you. I have heard your word tonight. I believe in you. That you are the Son of God. Tonight, I hand over my life to you. And I receive your life in exchange. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. Be my King forever. I declare 
that I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. I reign in life. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, we thank you for these precious ones. They have become, by their confession, members of the family of heaven. And it's an honor to welcome them to this family that so represents your voice and your counsel at this side of your kingdom. I pray that you will keep them in the name of Jesus. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit. May you become mighty men and women of the spirit. And I pray that the Lord himself will do wonders in and through your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. Now very quickly, there's a counselor. There are counselors waving a placard for you. All of you, I want you to please move in concert. Just follow um, the counselors. Celebrate them as they go. Celebrate them as they go. Bless you, darling. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, please listen. Just some very important announcements. I have to welcome our first timers. I sincerely apologize. We're done in a moment. But you need to hear this. It's very important. Um, by the grace of God, you've seen what God has done in the ministry. It is so overwhelming. We're opening up more doors for the workforce. The first time we opened... Yes. Thank you. Now... Let me explain to you why many people are clapping. Because um, the first time we opened up doors for workforce, we had over 4,000 people, and we had to cut them down to about 10% of them. Uh, almost, I think it was a work, almost everybody here, the size, you know, applied for it. But now we're applying to specific departments, the security and traffic control, and then the the um, protocol and logistics department we also have ushers we need ushers you see how many people were flying up and down under the anointing we need a lot of ushers to help us now if you are interested by let's say three hours after tonight's service please go to our social media platforms especially our facebook and instagram platform can you project it for them to see please so that you can you can tender your application there are three hours after the service it will be up just click and then put in your names we we'll allow only two days for this that means by the end of tuesday and wednesday the doors will be closed and um so you please write your name ushers those who want to be part of the ushering team those who want to be part of our protocol and logistics department those who want to be part of the security and traffic control praise the name of the lord we'll take them gradually please make sure you have um, those down and then it will also the, the our global page that you have and you know you can also we'll make sure that it is there also so that you can click on it and then follow very quickly praise the name of the lord now i want to honor those who are coming here for the first time last week we were all first timers including me but now we're one week old so we're no longer first timers praise the name of the lord this is your first time worshiping with us here please i like you we're all standing but just wave your beautiful hands to jesus my good my goodness my goodness outside wave your hands all the overflows let's celebrate jesus for them thank you um now, very quickly, please keep your hands lifted, every one of you. A few officials will be handing to you our visitor's card. It's in two parts. The first part is for your information, it's, it, your consumption. It contains information about the ministry, our activities, what we stand for, our mandate, especially in this city. Please do well to tear the first half. You can go home with it. It's yours. Um, it's both a, an instrument for your edification and knowledge and also let it go with you as a mantle in the name of jesus and then the second half will plead that you quickly our time is up but quickly would like you to feel it as um let it be as clear as you can let it be very legible please feel it very quickly and then you can leave it on your desk there or pass it to an official that will be standing by your side uh, by next week we'll do well to do the welcome of visitors just somewhere in the middle of the service before i come up so that we can 
give you will give you room to be able to complete your forms we apologize for the pressure that is on you now but on behalf of jesus christ himself who is the apostle of the church and even over this commission we welcome you this is koinonia abuja and um, we thank god for what he's doing this is a family of people who truly love jesus christ and are passionate about seeing his kingdom come and replicating the fullness of his life we're here sundays 5 p.m do well to join us and your life will never be the same even if you have experienced don't come alone come with as many um, so that they can encounter jesus the least we can do for you now is to pray for you so all of us who are one week old we are going to stretch our hands towards every first timer you can find around or if you or you can just pray for them if you can't see anyone let's just speak words of blessings while they complete their forms we bless you we bless you we decree and declare that you go from glory to glory you are part of a house of power a house of his presence a house of favor a house of wisdom let these virtues of the spirit go with you we bless you with the blessings of heaven we declare and decree that every challenge that came here with you it drops and lets you go in victory you walk in victory you live in victory you speak in victory in the name of jesus christ let the name of the lord be exalted in jesus name i pray amen and amen now by by next week um by next week i'll have the time to share with you a vision that the lord revealed to me there is something we are going to do as god revealed to me in this city is going to be six to ten hours of prayers non-stop in this city praise the name of the lord so god put that we'll announce it hopefully by next week and structure it this is for the body of christ we need to shake the gates and let them know that the body of christ is alive and so we're going to be praying it's 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 not it's not a denominational thing at all and it's not going to interrupt the service it's not the regular service it probably may not even be here god will grant us grace for a strategic location and will stand and confront the altars over this city and say lift up your heads O ye gates hallelujah so i'd like you to prepare brace up god will grant us grace wherever he grants us grace to station ourselves we'll do that and have people is just going to be worship and prayer in the spirit and prophecy and no preaching at all it's just going to be drumming we're really going to be dissipating spiritual energy to settle certain things upon the soil of this land and then you will see doors open you will see believers come into the reality of their inheritance are we blessed please lift your hands and take the blessing as we wrap up in the name of jesus i declare that your week beginning from tonight is blessed you go in the power of the holy spirit your prayer life is on fire. Your word life is on fire. Next week, Sunday, by this time, return with your testimonies. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that everything that has mocked God in your life, it bows this week. We release you as light and as salt in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. God bless you. See you on Sunday.